الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today inshallah ta'ala is going to be our last class on the fiqh of family fiqh al-usrah the third lesson and final inshallah ta'ala and we left off um, last time al huquq al-zawjiyah the rights of the spouses and i said i'm going to talk about that from two perspectives two angles the first one is haqqul mar'ati ala rajuli the rights of the woman upon the husband and the second one is haqqul rajuli ala al mar'ah the rights of the husband upon his wife and the 10th and final point that i will be speaking about is al khilafat al zawjiya the marital disputes the marital disputes and the way that i hope to speak about that inshallah ta'ala is from two three different perspectives three different ways three different angles the first is ilaj al nushu al mar'ah curing improper behavior on the part of the woman and the second one is ilaj al nushu al rajuli curing solving improper behavior on the part of the husband and last but not least كيف الأمر إذا اشتد الخلاف خلاف بين الزوجين كيف الأمر إذا اشتد الخلاف بين الزوجين what should be done if the discord and the dispute between the spouses grows stronger and that's what we're going to finalize inshallah ta'ala this three-day uh, course with inshallah ta'ala so al-huquq al-zawjiyya the rights of the spouses we have to understand anna al-usrah amma al-usratu hiya al-labinati al-ula fi al-mujtaba that the family the first building block of the society is the family the family is the first building block of the society. إذا صلحت صلح المجتمع مجتمع كله. إذا إذا صلحت صلح المجتمع كله. وإذا فسدت فسد المجتمع كله. The household and the family, if they are in good state. The society as a whole will be in a good state. And if the family is corrupt, then the society as a whole will become corrupt. And it will rotten the state of the society. So Islam gave a lot of importance and gave a lot of attention to making sure that it perfects the structure of the household. The household is like the heart for the body. The Prophet said about the heart, إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ That if the heart is rotten, corrupt, then the whole entire body is corrupt. And if the heart is upright, so is the whole entire, so is the whole entire body. So the person who's wise, who's smart, what does he work on? His heart, right? Because the king. The same is in Islam, it gives a lot of attention to the household, the family, the wife, the children, the husband. What are each other's rights? What should the husband do for his wife? What should the wife do for her husband? Islam gives a lot of importance to it. Allah Taala He said in the Quran, 
الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموال فالصالحات قانتات حافظات للغيب بما حفظ الله In this ayah, if you look at it, Allah is showing us subhanahu wa ta'ala that the household, it stands on two parties. It's not all on one person's shoulder. The household is built upon, I mean the structure of the house is built upon the union of two people. The union of two people. Number one is the husband. And he's the one Allah started with in the ayah. الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم فالصالحات the righteous wife the righteous noble man the righteous noble wife both that is the structure of the household so let's talk about the wife and her rights we'll talk about the wives the wife's right on her husband. What should the man do for his wife? What we have to understand is these rights are a essential part of the family. And if these rights are not fulfilled, that household will rotten. That household will suffer. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said in the ayah, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا Allah told us in this ayah, from the signs of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is what? أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ That Allah created you from you men. What does it mean Allah created from men? Meaning Hawa was taken from Adam. Hawa was taken from Adam's rib, right? Allah told us لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The reason why The reason why Allah created the woman from Adam The Hawa from Adam And the reason why Allah created woman Is that you both find from one another A sakina tranquility لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا And then marriage is what? What should marriage bring? Tranquility If marriage is not bringing tranquility Something is what? Something's wrong. Because the ayah says it is to bring about tranquility. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Allah made amongst you مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Pay attention here. Uh, there's many benefits that can be taken from the ayah. But we, let's just take some. Allah says وَمِنْ آيَاتِ أَنْ خَلَاقَ أَنْ خَلَاقَ From the signs of Allah is that He created. صح? جَعَلَ means what? Made. It's the difference between khalaq and ja'ala. The scholars, they say that khalaq means Allah created it once. One time. Kun fayakun. The woman was there. She was just made. Like that. Are we all together? Allah created you one time. Kun bi fayakun. Everyone became. But when he came, wa ja'ala baynakum. Ja'ala means gradual. The love and the affection between the spouses, it grows. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً It goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Why did Allah say مودة and then رحمة? Why did He say مودة and then رحمة? The marriage when it starts, it starts with مودة. مودة is love. The two people are in love. The man is in love with his wife, and the wife is in love with the husband. They call it the honeymoon period, sah? The man keeps going, he says, I'm going to go home. He doesn't want to play with his friends. He doesn't want to go football with his friends that he used to go with. He's going home quickly because he's in love. He's texting all day his wife. You can see the happiness and the excitement. So, mawadda. And rahma means when they too have children, and they grow old with each other. Even if that spark of love dies, the mercy shouldn't die. The man should be very merciful to his wife. 
and the wife should be very merciful to her husband even if that spark of love goes there was a book I read one time a while back it talks about or the book is called I love you but I'm not in love with you I love you but I'm not in love with you and it explains what it means by that what it means by I'm not in love with you I love you but I'm not in love with you the point I'm trying to come to is it explains in that book generally speaking that spark of love and everything is at the beginning like in when you grow older it's genuine concern and worry and care for each other I've said this before and I say it again and I've said it last time the marriage for that mercy for that love to be three A's for the woman it's affection hey who memorized it your brothers already forgot affection appreciation and attention any woman who gets that her marriage will last she will love you if you give her attention affection and appreciation you will fulfill a great part of her so let's start with the rights inshallah ta'ala the first one is the first right that the wife has on her husband is the man lives with the woman he treats his wife in a good and proper manner as Allah said in the ayah and live with them honorably a man lives with his wife bil ma'roof in good and and he has proper manners with her ma'roof means you don't see a husband when he gets angry at his wife he uses vulgar language bad manners and akhlaq la what does it mean live with her in good it means he gives food to her when he eats a husband if you go out and you eat with your friends and you are going at big restaurants and you say to her eat bread and water it goes against the ayah ashir hunna bil ma'ruf live with them in good if you eat good she has to eat with you good if you buy yourself a good set of clothes she has to get it as well you're going every now and then buying yourself nice clothes and everything she has the rights to get that as well she has the rights the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith akmalul mu'minina imana the believer the muslim the one who has the complete iman is ahsanuhum khuluqa the one who has the best manners wa khiyarukum and the best amongst you is khiyarukum li nisaihi the one who is the best to his wife the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said one of the ways to live good with your family is kullu shay'in yalhu bihi ibn adam fa huwa batil the messenger said every single thing that mankind does every type of amusement every type of joy and amusement that the mankind does it is worthless no value to it except three illa thalathan three things are not worthless even though you're just playing around even though you're not serious even though it's just amusement and it's just playing around these three they're not worthless the first one is ramyuhu an qawsihi practicing archery that's not worthless wa ta'dib wa ta'dibahu farasahu and training one's horse wa mula'abatahu ahlahu and playing around with one's wife the messenger said fa hunna min al they are justified those three they are justified the day of judgment so it's not waste of time to play with your wife or spend time with them like that 
And to say you're wasting my time, it means you haven't understood the ayah wa ashiruhunna bil ma'roof. Brothers, it doesn't mean that you just throw money at your wife, but it really does mean that you play and you joke with them and you laugh with them. It gives them this happiness. They left their house, their, their, their father's house. They came to your house. They live with you. They really want your attention. One of the benefits that I read is men, Ibn Aqil al Hanbali, I think it was him who said it, men love what they are created from and women love what they are created from. Men love their jobs and they like to talk about their jobs. True or false? The reason is because men are made from the earth and the earth is where agriculture comes from. And so men love to discuss their salary and how much they make and what happened at work and etc. Because it's what they are made out of. And women love their partner because that's, they were, that's what they were taken out of. Hawa was taken from Adam. So the woman is taken from the man. So she just wants to talk about him. Even when she's with her friends, she's like, my husband, you know what he does? She's talking about him all day. She, it's just about him that she's always, when she's with her family, she's talking about him. My husband doesn't like doing that. She'll try to fit him into any sentence and any... Huh? Because she... Because it's him who Allah created her out of. And then it's smart. Are you with me? The husband understands that. She's interested in him. She wants to know about him. That he gives her back that attention. Are we all together? And it's smart on the woman's part to realize when he talks about his work, that's what he enjoys talking about. And she's also smart to what? To, dis- to talk to him about it. And to get involved. No. The second rights that the wife has is The man should be patient. And he should be he should endure any harm she does and overlook any of her mistakes. You didn't marry an angel. You married a human being. She's not perfect. You knew she wasn't perfect when you got married to her. But her imperfection should be your perfection. You should love her for what she is. A lot of men, they will complain and they'll say to you, but my wife is this and my wife is that. If your wife becomes everything that you want, you want her to become, then she won't be who she is, right? She'll be something else. So is it her that you love? Or do you love what you've got in your mind? Sah? You should love her for what she is. Well, the messenger taught us this. He said, "La yafrak mu'minun mu'minatan in kariha minha khuluqa radiya minha akhara." The messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "A believe, a believing man should never hate a believing woman. He shouldn't hate his wife. He shouldn't hate a believing woman. If he dislikes one of her characteristics, he dislikes an attribute of hers." The messenger said he will be pleased with another of her characteristics. Another attribute that she has that you'll be pleased with. Yes, maybe she's not the best uh, cooker. But you know what she is? She is the most honest and truthful and most sincerest person you could come across. If there's something about her that you don't like, then there are, other many, there are many other things in her that you can appreciate. That's what you should focus on. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِسْتَوْسُوا بِالنِّسَاءِ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّهُنَّ خُلِقْنَا مِنْ ضِلْعٍ وَإِنَّ أَعْوَجَ مَا فِي الضِلْعِ أَعْلَاهُ فَإِنْ ذَهَبَتْ تُقِيمُهُ كَسَرْتَهُ وَإِنْ تَرَكْتَهُ لَمْ يَزَلْ أَعْوَجْ فَاسْتَوْسُوا بِالنِّسَاءِ خَيْرًا The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in this hadith, advise. He said, I advise you, the Prophet said. I advise you to treat women well, for they have certainly been created from the upper part of the rib. And the most crooked part of the rib is the upper part. If you then try to make it straight, you'll break it off. 
If you leave it, it will remain crooked. So I advise you to treat women well. She's made from that rib. It's crooked. There are things in her that are not perfect. Perfect. If you try to straighten it, you will break it. And that breaking is a, what does it mean? A talaq, divorce. You go separate ways. If you try to straighten her, if you, if you try to fine tune her, if you want to make a hundred percent correct every mistake of hers, she will not be able to tolerate it. She'll crack. She'll break. But if you leave her the way she is and you work around it, that marriage will remain. And the only way that you can keep her in that way is to look at the ocean of good that she has and the ocean of righteous deeds, the ocean of <coughs> good that she has. وَلِذَارِكَ the Prophet وسلم, when he divorced Hafsa and he wanted to leave her, what did the Prophet وسلم, be told? What was he told? إِنَّهَا صَوَّامَةٌ قَوَّامَةٌ Muhammad وسلم, Allah said to him, Hafsa is a woman who fasts. She's a what? Qawwamah. She's one who prays. She prays and she fasts. Allah mentioned the good attributes that she has. A person should look, look at that. بعض السلف, some of the Salaf, they said, اعلم أنه ليس حسن الخلق مع المرأة كف الأذى عنها بل تحمل الأذى منها والحلم والحلم على طيشها وغضبها اقتداء برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقد كانت نساؤه يراجعنه وتهجره إحداهن اليوم وإلى الليلة. Some of the salaf, as Ibn Qudama mentioned in his kitab, مختصر مختصر من هذه القاصدين. That some of the salaf, I mean, one of the pious predecessors, he said, remember this. You should realize, this is what they said. You should realize that behaving properly towards one's wife does not simply mean not harming her. Some people they think, they assume that good manners is that I don't harm my wife. No. You should realize that behaving properly, coming with good manners and etiquettes towards your wife does not simply mean not harming her. In fact, it means bearing her harm and being patient with her harshness and anger and emulation of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His wives would sometimes speak back to him or avoid him from the day until night. The Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, his wives would speak back to him. Sometimes they would boycott him for one day and one night. The Prophet's wives would do this to him. He had managed with them and akhlaq and adab. So when the ayah, I mean the hadith that we mentioned, where the Prophet said, Akmal al imana, the, the believer who has the completest iman is, Ahsanuhum khuluqa, the one who has the best manners. Wa khiyarukum, khiyarukum li nisa'ihim. And the best mannered one amongst you, and the best one amongst you is the one who is the best for his family. What it means is, to bear their harshness, their anger, their improper behavior. Number three. وَمِنْ حَقِّ الْمَرْأَةِ The rights of the wife is عَلَى الرَّجْلِ on the man أَنْ يَصُونَهَا وَيَحْفَظَهَا مِنْ كُلِّ مَا يَخْدِشُ شَرَفَهَا وَيَثْلِمُ عِرْضَهَا وَيَمْتَهِينُ كَرَامَتَهَا The third is, the third right that the wife has upon her husband is, he protects her. He protects her. And he guards her from anything that may damage her reputation and honor. And the way that he can do that, brothers, is One of the ways to protect your wife and to guard her from anything that may damage her reputation and honor, it is to keep her from going out displaying her beauty and dressing in an incorrect manner. Also, to keep her away from mixing with the, with the men who are not related to her, her maharim. To not say about her things that could damage her reputation. You don't speak about your wife 
and her honor to other people and damage it. The man is responsible for his family and he will be questioned about it the day of judgment. Number four. وَمِنْ حَقِّ الْمَرْأَةِ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ أَنْ يُعَلِّمَهَا الضَّرُورِيَّ مِنْ أُمُورِ دِينِهَا Number four is the fourth right that the wife has upon her husband is that he teaches her what she needs to know of her religion or that he permits her to attend sessions of learning أو يأذن لها أن تحضر مجالس العلم Either you are a person of knowledge and so you can teach her the religion do that if you have knowledge but if you don't facilitate for her classes that she can attend where she can study the religion of Allah Azza wa Jalla because the religion is more important than food and drinking didn't Allah not say ya ayyuhalladhina amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara those of you who believe protect your, yourselves and your families from the hellfire how do you protect your family from the hellfire how do you protect your wife from the hellfire and your children from the hellfire Ali ibn Abi Talib he said it is to educate them and it's to discipline them number five وَمِنْ حَقِّ الْمَرْأَةِ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ أَنْ يَأْمُرَهَا بِإِقَامَةِ دِينِ اللَّهِ وَالْمُحَافَظَةِ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ The fifth rights of the wife upon her husband is that he orders her to abide by the religion of Allah Azza wa Jalla and regularly perform the prayer. The husband, his role, his role is he tells his wife that which is obligatory upon her. He commands her the obligatory things, especially the prayer. Allah said in the ayah, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Allah Ta'ala says and enjoin the prayer on your family and be patient in offering them number six وَمِنْ حَقِّ الْمَرْأَةِ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ أَنْ يَأْذَنَ لَهَا فِي الْخُرُوجِ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ إِذَا احْتَاجَتْ إِلَيْهِ تَنْ كَأَنْ تَرْغَبَ فِي شُهُودِ الجماعة أو في زيارة أهلها وأقاربها أو جيرانها بشرط أن يأمرها بالجلباب وينهاها عن التبرج والسفور وكما ينهاها عن العطر والبخور ويحذرها من الاختلاط بالرجال ومصافحتهم كما يحذرها من رؤية التلفزيون وسماع الأغاني Number six It is a right of the woman and the wife upon her husband that he does not spread Sorry, it is also from the rights of the wife upon her husband that he permits her to leave the house whenever there is a need to do so. That he permits her to leave the house whenever there is a need to do so. Such as to attend the congregational prayers or to visit her family, relatives and neighbors. However, if there is a conditioned... However... This is, the, it, it, this is based on the condition like in. This is conditioned that she wears the jilbab. And she doesn't leave the house with perfume on. And she doesn't go to places where, she, where she's going to free mix with the opposite gender. If none of that is going to take place on a place where she will not be coming into contact with the opposite gender. She won't be touching a man or anything. Also, he should also warn her about watching television. Or listening to songs. Some of you might think this is extreme. Really? Television? Come on. But the truth of the matter is, this is not only for the woman, it's also for the man. Television only brings problems, to be honest. Television is there to indoctrinate, your, indoctrinate you, to feed you a false narrative, lie to you, especially if that is Bollywood and Hollywood. It gives the person a false impression of how marriage is. And if it doesn't meet that criteria, and if it doesn't meet that, then she believes that this marriage is destruction. 
she's looking for something even though she has a blessing in her hands ungratefulness because she watched on Bollywood that they run in the middle of the park so she wants to do that this is what she thinks marriage is about Tah. the truth she doesn't see it but the Quran and the Sunnah tells us the truth what did it tell us there's going to be problems with your wife things you may not like about her but be patient with that look at the old, old the complete good in her Hollywood and Bollywood what does it say to us no there's no problem with her and so the man the minute he gets married to a woman he's looking for one who's an angel perfect so that's a problem number seven ومن حق المرأة على الرجل ألا يفشي سرها وألا يذكر عيبها إذ هو الأمين عليها والمطالب برعيتها والذود عنها. Number eight is sorry number seven. It is her right and upon her husband that he does not spread her private matters and that he does not mention her shortcoming. If your wife told you a secret, you keep it a secret and it remains a secret. You don't tell anyone about it. The worst secret to spread, the most despicable secret to spread, is your sexual relationship with your wife. It's despicable for a person to talk about his action with his wife to other people. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith, "Asma bint Yazid an na kanat inda Rasulillahi wa rijal wa nisa uqoodun." Asma bint Yazid narrated that she was with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the men and the women were sitting there then the messenger said la ala rajulan yaqulu ma yaf'alu bi ahlihi wa la ala imra'atan tukhbiru bima fa'alat ma'a zawjiha the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said perhaps perhaps some men speak about what they do with their wives and some women speak about what they do with their husbands and then فَأَرَمَّ الْقَوْمُ فَقُلْتُ إِي وَاللَّهِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ As she said, some people were silent. I mean, the people were silent, they didn't speak. But she said, me? I said, إِي وَاللَّهِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Yes, O Messenger of Allah. That's the case. إِنَّهُنَّ لَيَفْعَلْنَ They do this. It does happen. The women do this. وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَفْعَلُونَ And the men also do it, O Messenger of Allah. قال the messenger then said فلا تفعلوا فإنما ذلك مثل الشيطان لقي شيطانة في طريق فغشيها والناس ينظرون the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said don't do that that is like a male devil who met a female devil in the street and he had intercourse with her with the people looking number eight ومن حق المرأة على الرجل أن يستشيرها في الأمور ولا سيما التي يخصها وأولادهما. Number eight. It is the right of the wife that her husband he seeks advice from her in matters, especially matters that are particularly concerning to her and their children. The man doesn't just come to his wife and say. Well, guess what? Tomorrow you're flying out. You're moving to another country. No, the man should consult his wives. He should talk to his wife. And the evidence for this is the the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he consulted his wife, Ummu Salama, about the issue of the companions shaving their hair. She said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You messenger of Allah, do it first, and they will do what you do after them. After them, forget, don't talk to them. You do it, and then they will follow you. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he listened to his wife, and he did it. And then what? They followed him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's important to consult your, with your wife. I'd be very honest with you. Sometimes they. They will mention wise things that you may not have seen. Just one example. I was one time in a shop in a market, and there was a lot of you know those waters you buy. 
small bottles of water. So I got a lot of them. Put them in the, ba- in, in the, in the what's it called, the trolley. A lot of them. 10, 15, I don't remember, but it was a lot. And so when I came to the, uh, when I came to the tilt, I put every one of them there. So my wife said to me, why don't you just put one and tell them the remaining that's in the, uh, just tell the, just give them one and say you've got 19 instead of having to bring everything out. And she said, why don't you just pick one of each and tell them that whatever else you have in your... So I looked and I said, I was only testing you. I just wanted to see what you do. You pass the test. <laughs> but you see the wisdom, subhanAllah, it's wisdom. Sometimes you get, so you benefit. That's just an example, but there's many other things that will honestly, if you talk with your wife, you benefit from it. It's not, and the Prophet benefited from Umm Salama. She told him something and it helped him, alayhi salatu wasalam. So it's not wrong. It do, it's not degrading. It's not putting you down. If you do mushawara with your wife and she brings something better than yours, leave yours. Stop. Don't be arrogant. And just take what she says and says, okay, that's right. You're, it, seems, it seems wiser. It's better. وَمِنْ حَقِّ الْمَرْأَةِ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ Number nine, right? وَمِنْ حَقِّ الْمَرْأَةِ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ أَنْ يَرْجِعَ إِلَيْهَا بَعْدَ الْعِشَاءِ مُبَاشَرَةً وَأَنْ لَا يَسْحَرَ خَارِجَ الْمَنْزِلِ إِلَى سَاعَةٍ مُتَأَخِرَةٍ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ the, the ninth right is that the wife has on the husband is that he returns home immediately after Isha. After he prays the Salat al-Isha, the rights that the wife has, the right that the wife has on her husband is he returns, to, he returns and he comes home straight away. That's her rights. For two reasons. Number one, it might stress her out where your, your well-being and where you are. She might be worried about you. And number two, she might want you as a husband. And this falls under the hadith of um, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. The fact that he would stay up all night and he would be busy doing ibadah and praying the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He told him off and he said to him, Inna li zawjika alayka haqqa. Your wife has rights on you. This was him leaving her at night. So you being away after Isha is taking away that right of the night from her. Number 10. وَمِنْ حَقِّ الْمَرَأَةِ عَلَى الرَّجُلِ أَنْ يَعْدِلَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ ضَرَّتِهَا إِنْ كَانَ لَهَا ضَرَّةِ The tenth one is, if it's a polygamous relationship, and there's, a, there's co-wives involved, you have more than one wife, it is the right of the wife upon the husband that he treats co-wives in a just and an equitable manner. He must be equitable and respectful to all of them in terms of food, drink and clothing, housing and spending the night with each and every one of them. The Prophet ﷺ told us in the hadith, مَنْ كَانَ لَهُمْ رَأَتَانِ فَمَالَ إِلَىٰ أَحَدُهُمَا دُونَ الْأُخْرَىٰ جَاءَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَشِقُّهُ مَائِلٌ the messenger said, whoever has two wives and shows favoritism to one of them, he will come on the day of judgment with one of his sides hanging down. A man has more or two or more wives. He's, he shows favoritism to one of them. He gives superiority to the other one. He treats one of them very good, gives them a lavish life. The Prophet said he said he will come the day of judgment and his side is hanging. Now we're going to go into the rights of the husband. Some of the brothers just woke up now. Yeah? They just woke up now. Yeah? You want to listen to this one? What about the one before? The rights of the man upon his wife. Number one, the rights of the husband, first of all, we have to understand before we go into it, before I go into mentioning it, the rights of the husband is very, very, very serious, very, very detailed. And I have to be very honest, the rights of the husband is more than the rights of the wife. 
If you look at the Nusus al Wahyain, the Quran and the Sunnah, the rights of the husband tends to be more than the rights of the woman. The Prophet وسلم, he gave the rights of the husband so great and so high that he said, حَقُّ الزَّوْجِ عَلَى زَوْجَتِي أَلَّوْ كَانَتْ بِهِ قُرْحَةٌ فَلَحَسَتْهَا مَا أَدَّتْ حَقَّهُ The Messenger وسلم, he said, the rights of the husband over his wife is so great that even if he were to, even if she was to lick his wounds, the pus that came out of his, you know, if he wound, that yellow pus that comes out, or the wound, if his wife was to lick it with her tongue, she would not have fulfilled his rights. The wounds on his body parts, if she was to lick it off, the Prophet said, she would not fulfill his rights. His rights are too much. The Prophet also said, alayhi salatu wasalam, in a hadith, Ibn Kathirin graded it to be sahih, Bayhaqi narrated in his sunan, Ibn Kathir graded it, graded it to be authentic in his kitab, Dila'il al nubuwa That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam, they brought him a camel. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, this camel became very vicious. This camel is very vicious. It's very vicious. And it eats. The camel is eating. It's eating whatever comes in its way. It's, it's vicious. It doesn't allow anything to be put on its back. So the Prophet said, bring the camel to me. So the owners, they went and they brought the camel. The Prophet approached the camel, alayhi salatu wasalam. When he approached the camel, and the camel was, it went in the corner of the masjid. So the Prophet approached the camel, and we, when he approached the camel, the camel prostrated. The camel put his head down and prostrated. The Prophet, while he was walking towards it, the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, don't walk, don't walk, it's going to eat you. We told you, this is a vicious animal. The Prophet said, no problem. And he, went, and he kept walking. The closer he got the camel, the, closer, the, 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 way, the camel was going down. Sujood for the Prophet Sallallahu When the Sahaba saw this, they were shocked. They said, Ya Rasulullah, if this animal understood to prostrate for you, then we have more rights to do it. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا ينبغي أن يسجد لرجل It is not permissible for a person to prostrate for another person. ولو كنت آمورا And if I was to command a person, a person to prostrate for another person, لَأَمَرْتُ الْمَرْأَةَ أَنْ تَسْجُدَ لِزَوْجِهَا لِعُظَمِ الْحَقِّ عَلَيْهَا I would have commanded the woman to prostrate to her husband because of the great rights that he has on her. لِعِظَمِ الْحَقِّ عَلَيْهَا The hadith mentions how big the rights that he has. وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَةُ خَمْسَاءَ If the woman prays her five, five daily prayers. She prays five times a day. ظُهُرْ عَصِرْ مَغْرِبْ عِشَ وصامت شهرها and she fasted a month of Ramadan. وحفظت فرجها and she protects her private part. وأطاعت زوجها and she obeys her husband. قيل لها it will be said to her, ادخل الجنة من أي أبوابها she enter from whichever doors of Jannah you want. Any woman who does this, she will not only enter Jannah, but she will choose which door of Jannah she wants to enter from. She will choose whichever eight doors that she wants to enter from. The Prophet said, Alayhi salatu wasalam, Ida salatil mar'atu khamsa. If the woman prays five times a day, she fulfills her salah. Wasamat shahraha, and she fasts the month of Ramadan. Wahafidat farjaha, and she protects her private part. She doesn't do zina. Wa'ata'at zawjaha, and she obeys her husband. It will be said to that woman, Udukhulil Jannah, enter paradise, enter Jannah. Which Jannah? Jannah al Khult. The Jannah, the eternal Jannah, the true Jannah, the real Jannah, the only Jannah. It will be said to her, enter it from where? Min ayi abwabiha shi'ti, whichever of its doors that you want to enter from. You choose. Whichever of its doors that you want to enter from. 
Are we all together? This concept, I'll be, ve I will be very honest with you, is being diluted today. Some people, they want to please just the opposite gender and they hide these hadiths and they say, you know, don't say it, don't mention it. Problematic. And it feeds into the narrative of feminism. The feminism which we believe is disbelief. Kufrun billahi la aliyul Feminism is disbelief. It's kufr in its essence. Are we all together? We don't care about it. So a person will do, he will throw these ahadiths, dismiss it. And guess what? When these ahadiths get dismissed and they get thrown under the rug and it doesn't get mentioned, it increases the, the problems that are present in the household. Hey, wallah. It is true to tell everybody what they have to do. Allah is the one who prescribed this. Whether the people like to hear it or not, men or women have to say it. Sahih. It has to be said. The Prophet said in another hadith, I swear by the Lord, my soul is in his hand. There is not a man. who calls his wife to his bed. And she refuses. Except that the one in the sky is angry with her. Until he becomes pleased with her. There's a sheikh who mentioned as a side joke, inshallah ta'ala. There was a sheikh who mentioned that a brother came to a meeting to marry a sister. He wanted to marry her. And so the father and the willy of the family, or the girl's guardian, invited the brother over. And they brought the sister in and they asked. To this, they said to the sister, you can ask questions if you have. And to the brother, if you have any questions, you can ask. And the guardian and the father of the girl was there. So the girl wanted to know if this boy's aqidah is good. Is his aqidah, aqidah to ahli sunnati wal jama'ah. Is he upon the right aqidah? Or is he corrupt in his aqidah? So she said to him, where is Allah? Ain Allah. Aqidah ahli sunnah is what? Allah is above his throne. That's the belief of ahli sunnah. Bi'ijma'ah. That's a consensus. There's no difference of opinion. So he used this hadith. He said, I swear by the Lord. The hadith of the Prophet. That the Prophet said, I swear by the Lord in which my hand is in his soul. There is not a man who calls his wife. To the bed. And she refuses. Except the one that's in the sky. Sakhitan alayha is angry with her Hatta yarda anha until he pleases Until he is pleased with her So the sheikh said He used what? One stone for two For two beds He got two messages across So, so let's mention the rights Is that she obeys him The backbone of the rights of the husband revolves around obedience she obeys him. She listens to him. Those ahadiths that I've mentioned are examples. She obeys him. Obedience of the husband is very strong. The wife has to listen to her husband. And do as he tells her. Number two. She protects his, his honor. Some women, they speak about their husbands in gatherings. And they say things about him. My husband is like this, and my husband is like this, and my husband is like that. Protect your husband's honor. Don't talk, to it, don't talk about it to anyone. Guard his honor. Because what did Ayah say? فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ She protects his honor. The Ayah says, Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient to Allah and to their husbands. And God, in their husband's absence, what Allah ordered them to guard, their chastity, their husband's property, they guard all of that. They protect her, their honor for him. A woman who cheats behind her husband's back has deceived her husband. 
or talks to another husband or another man in a sexual promiscuous way behind her husband's back has deceived her husband she's not allowed to do that number three women haqqi zawja ala zawjatihi an tatazayyana lahu wa tatajammal the third one is that the wife beautifies her husband beautifies herself for her husband the prophet sallallahu alaihi said in the hadith khayru nisa'i man tasurruka idha absarta hadith abdullah ibn salam the best woman sisters have to remember this the best woman the prophet sallallahu alaihi said is when you look at her you just get happy when the man he looks at her he's happy wa tuti'uka idha amarta and she obeys you when you command her wa tahfadu ghaybatiki ghaybatika fi nafsiha wa malik she also she safeguards everything when you're away she doesn't let your properties your belongings your everything she makes sure no one plays around with it she takes care of it she looks after it for you so what we want from the hadith is the wife her husband she should be one that her husband when he sees her he's happy he should she should not be one that when he remembers her he's like oh do i have to go home oh i'm gonna meet her again and the reason why he feels that way is because you're as soon as he comes in you're going to start complaining you're going to give him a headache that it reaches a point where your husband feels like it's a it's a it's a response he has to just do it because it's obligatory on him checklist he has to follow it he's just like okay i have to do that i have to do that he doesn't enjoy it it's a problem and the way that a woman can do that is she beautifies herself some sisters they forget this concept and the only time that they beautify themselves is when they go on wedding uh, to the extent that the husband comes home and he thinks he came into the wrong house he's like oh so sorry but that's his own home uh, it's very dangerous the woman should remember to beautify herself he comes home every day she's got the children's vomit on she doesn't care she's like oh she's messy everything she gets invited at a wedding or a sister's little gathering or somewhere she makes sure she puts the utmost effort in and then she complains why is my husband not uh, with me why does he not want to be with me it's very dangerous so take care of your appearance take care of your look and the way you are but i also have to mention out of fairness out of fairness the the truth is that women are not strong and they're not they're weak creation of allah so it's not right on the man of the husband the rights on the man that he places everything on her he doesn't do anything and he expects the wife to look beautiful every time that's unjust he forsakes his rights he doesn't provide for her he also doesn't he doesn't take care of the children with her he lets she has to do everything by herself she has to run around she has to go get it to get the shopping she has to clean the house she has to cook she has to do everything and then he perfect he he expects but the time he comes home she's tired and she's the energy is gone so remember she's a human being brothers you have to help in the house you have to help her if you want that as well it comes with a cost okay number four I mean haqqi zawja ala zawjati an talzama baytahu فَلَا تَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ وَلَوْ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّا The fourth one is that the wife does not leave the house without the permission of her husband. Even if she wants to go to the masjid. She has to consult him and ask his permission. And this is based on the ayah, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّا Stay in your houses. Number five, وَمِنْ حَقِّ الزَّوْجِ عَلَى زَوْجَتِهِ أَلَّا يَأْذَنَ فِي بَيْتِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ The rights is that the wife she does not bring anyone into the house without his permission the prophet said in the hadith فَحَقُّكُمْ عَلَيْهِنَّ أَلَّا يُوَاطِئْنَ فُرَشَكُمْ مَنْ تَكْرَهُونَ وَلَا يَأْذَنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ لِمَنْ تَكْرَهُونَ the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said a woman is not is not allowed to let anyone to your sitting in your living room and sit around and be in the house or your house or your bed 
She's not allowed to do it in there. وَلَا يَأْذَنَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ لِمَنْ تَكْرَهُونَ And she's not allowed to allow into the house anyone you know he doesn't like. Are we all together? Like it's wrong brothers. Very evil, very devilish that a husband will make his wife boycott her own family members. And he will tell her, don't let your mom come to my house. I don't want her. I don't want your siblings to come to my house. And then you expect her to love your mother and take care of your brothers. Why would you be a cause to cut the ties of kinship? Are you going to cut the ties of kinship? Silatul Arham. And be a cause for a mother and a daughter not to talk. A mother and a, her father not to talk. Number six. وَمِنْ حَقِّ الزَّوْجِ عَلَى زَوْجَتِي أَنْ تَحْفَظَ مَا لَهُ وَأَلَّا تُنْفِقَ مِنْهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِي لِقَوْلِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَلَا تُنْفِقْ مَرَأَةٌ شَيْئًا مِنْ بَيْتِ زَوْجِهَا إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ زَوْجِهَا قِيلَ وَلَا الطَّعَامِ قَالَ ذَلِكَ أَفْضَلُ أَمْوَالِهِنَا The Prophet ﷺ said, the sixth one is that the wife, she does not give out his wealth. The money that he gave to her, she does not give it out. And she does not spend it without his, without his, without his permission. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, وَلَا تُنْفِقُمْ رَأَةٌ A woman should not spend anything from the wealth of her husband except with his permission. So a woman stood up and she said, Ya Rasulullah, even food? And the Prophet said, ذلك أفضل أموالنا that Rather, that's our most, most honorable wealth. Of course food, our greatest form of wealth. She can't go and just give out food and she can't just give it to who she wants and the neighbors and she's feeding them without the man's permission. And the permission is two types, brothers. There is general permission she can take from him are we all together? At the beginning of the marriage, she takes permission from him, general. And so, sometimes she, can, she has to take specific if it's outside the ordinary. Number eight. Sorry, number seven. That the wife does not fast. A voluntary fasting without his permission. Because of the Prophet's statement, A woman should not fast whilst her husband is around and he's present, except with his permission. His permission. In order to finish, brothers, I'm only going to mention 10 for the men and 10 for the women, okay? Number eight. ومن حق الزوجة على زوجتي ألا تمن عليه بما أنفقت بما أنفقت من أموالها في بيتها وعلى عيالها فإن المن فإن المن يبطل الأجر والثواب. The rights that the husband has on you is on his wife that she doesn't tell and talk about the favors that she has done for this family. If it wasn't for me, this family would not have existed. It's me, Ba'd Allah Jalla, that this family exists. Look at these children. If I die today, no one's going to take care of them, only me. If you get married, you hear that a lot, inshallah. You hear that very often. So, the husband, the wife should stay away from that. And she talks about what she has done for this family and how she's went out of her way. And she's bestowed this and that and this on the family and it's her that this family stands on and she's the backbone of this household and she should stay away from that. Because it falls under the ayah of Allah Azza wa Jalla where he said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tubutilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal adha. Do not destroy your sadaqah, your good doings by mentioning the favors that you've done for others. Some people do, do that, that's what they do. They destroy their... F they give you something and you reach a point where you say, I wish he never gave it to me. I wish this person never gave this to me. Every day he remembers you, he says, do you remember me? Who are you? 
Uh, I'm the one who did this, this, this for you. Any opportunity he gets, he reminds you. Do you want me to do a favor for you again? Every time he'll bring it up. The righteous and the wise person forgets the good that he does for others. And he keeps, he leaves it, he forgets it. Are we all together? And some people, subhanAllah, who say, why is, he doing this for me? why is he doing this to me when I did this and this and this and this for him? It means that you did it with the intent of getting something in return. You shouldn't have that intention. When you do things for people, whether they do the same in return for you or not, it doesn't matter. The last one that we're going to mention is وَمِنْ حَقِّ زَوْجَ عَلَى زَوْجَتِ أَنْ تَرْضَى بِالْيَسِيرِ وَأَنْ تَقْنَعَ بِالْمَوْجُودِ وَأَلَّا تُكَلِّفَهُ مِنَ النَّفَقَةِ مَا لَا يُطِيقَ the last, the tenth one is, is it the ninth one? Mm-hmm, you're right, it's the ninth one. Okay, is that the wife is happy and she's pleased with little. The little that the husband gives her. If, he gives her, if the man doesn't make much, he's struggling, he's make, trying to make ends meet, he's putting all his efforts, the little effort that he's coming with, that she shows gratitude towards it. And she's happy with whatever they have. And she doesn't burden him to whatever he can't do and say, No, I don't care, you need to get another job. Allah said in the ayah, Allah says in the ayah, Let the rich man spend according to his means. And the man whose resources are restricted, let him spend according to what Allah has given him. Allah puts no burden on any person beyond what he has given what he has given him Allah will grant ease after hardship the person doesn't have much don't worry give what you have spend what you have if your rizq has been restricted give whatever you have and whatever ability you have after this hardship that you're going through Allah is going to bring about ease inshallah ta'ala last one is وَمِنْ حَقِّ زَوْجِ عَلَى زَوْجَتِي أَنْ تُحْسِنَ الْقِيَامُ عَلَى تَرْبِيَةِ أُولَادِهَا مِنُهُ فِي سَيْءِ فِي صَبْرٍ فَلَا تَغْضَبَ عَلَى أُولَادِهَا أَمَامَهُ The f- tenth one is that she, give, she nurtures the children correctly. The woman, she nurtures the children correctly. And she gives, she gives good tarbiya to the children. Oh, she does that. She brings up the children in good manners with patience and not being angered with her children in front of him without supplicating against them, abusing them. Some mothers, they get angry more when the father is around. Before that, she's running around with the children, she's angry, do this, do this. But when he comes, she gets even more angrier. Ah, She puts a little show on. What does she do? When he comes, she puts a little show on. Ah, look at these kids, look what they're doing. You see, I'm struggling in this world. She shows this all to him. And then she curses the children. And she makes... She should stay away from that. And that falls in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. If the woman doesn't give her husband, he says, he said in the a woman does not harm her husband. She does not stress him. She does not cause him hardship. Yay. If she does that, if she does that and she harms her husband, the Hurul Ain responds. And they say, Do not harm him. May Allah destroy you. He is just a guest with you, and soon he will be departing to you from you to us. So those are the rights of the husband. Some of the rights of the husband that are mentioned. And, and, and the rights of the women that I mentioned, there were more than the ones I mentioned, there were more than ten, of course. Let me, let me quickly go into the, the uh, last point, inshallah ta'ala, which is al khilafat zawjiyah The marital disputes. And this is very, very important. I'm going to start with ilaj nushuz al mar'ah. Curing improper behavior on the part of the, the woman. And the reason why I'm starting with that is because before I started with the rights of the wife. So it's fair now that I start with the improper behavior of the woman. If a woman's improper in her behavior, immature, immature, 
she's acting in an incorrect way. She's, she's going against um, those rights that we mentioned. The steps that should be taken is number one, as Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ تَخَا... وَالَّذِينَ... وَالَّتِي تَخَافُونَ نُشُوزَهُنَّ فَعِذُوهُنَّ وَهْجُرُوهُنَّ فِي الْمَضَاجِعِ وَاضْرِبُوهُنَّ فَإِنْ أَطَعَنَكُمْ فَلَا تَبُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ سَبِيلًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيًّا كَبِيرًا The woman who, Allah says, the woman who is ill conduct, Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَعِذُوهُنَّ Admonish her, admonish them, remind her of the day of judgment. Say to اتَّقِ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ The first step that you take when a woman is ill-mannered, ill-conduct is فَعِذُوهُنَّ Remind her of Allah, the day of judgment. What are you going to do when you stand in front of Allah? Look how you're talking, look how you're acting, look how you're, what you are. فَعِذُوهُنَّ الْمَوْعِذَ Speak to her heart. Use that. If that doesn't work, She's still persistent in her ways. Allah says, Refuse to share the bed with them. Refuse to share the bed. Because this is where, the bed is where the partners come together really. And they bond more. So if you're angry with her and then you have intimate relationship that generally makes the mistake seem like it's gone now and does come across like that so ill conduct stay away from the wife you don't leave the house though and you go other places within the house you move away sleep in the living room sleep somewhere else just don't share the bed with them if that doesn't work Allah says discipline them discipline them Lakin, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Abdullah Iyas ibn Abdullah ibn Abi Dhubabin he said qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tadribu ima Allah the messenger said do not beat up the women do not beat the women faja'a umarun ila rasulillah umar then came he said ya rasulullah messenger of Allah dha'irna nisa' ala azwajihinna farakhasa fi darbihinna the Umar who came and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, the women are now transgressing on their husbands. They are wronging. When you said that, they do what they want. Then the Prophet said, Discipline them. Then the women came complaining to the Prophet. Many women they came to the Prophet and they complained about what the men are doing. They're beating their wives and etc. The Prophet said, Muhammad, today the house of Muhammad, many women have come. Nisa un kathirun yashkuna azwajahunna who are complaining about their husbands. Laysa ulaika bi khiyarikum. Remember that these men whose wives are complaining about them, they, you are, they're not the best of you guys. These men who are beating and going about and bashing their wives. It's the Prophet never ever beat his wife. Never. He never did that. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet وسلم, he said in the hadith, those men are not the best among you. Those men are not the best. In another hadith, the Prophet وسلم, mentioned Abdullah ibn Zama, he said, and no Sami Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he heard the Prophet saying, Ya Madu Ahadukum Fayajidu Imraatu Jaldal Abdi. The Prophet وسلم, he said, You should not beat your wives like you would beat a slave, for perhaps you will have you will then have intercourse with her at the end of your the day. The man beats us his wife up, and then later he wants to have an intimate relationship with her. It's very despicable, it's very bad, it's very evil. And trust me, this only brings the tanaffur in the heart. The wife becomes very repulsive towards you. Especially a man that beats his wife in front of the children. He beats the mother in front of what? In front of the children. Trust me, I will say to those men when they come, their wives complaining about them, فَلَيْسَ أُولَئِكَ بِخِيَارِكُمْ Wallahi, that's not the best amongst you. That is not the best amongst you. 
Now we're going to go, into, those are the three steps. Now we're going to go into the way to cure improper behavior on the part of the husband. Allah said in the ayah, وَإِنْ إِمْرَاتٌ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْلِيَا نُشُوزًا أَوْ إِعْرَاضًا فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْمَا أَنْ يُصْلِحَا بَيْنَوْمَا صُلْحًا وَالصُلْحُ خَيْرٌ وَأُحْضِرَتِ الْأَنفُسُ الشُّحْ وَإِنْ تُحْسِنُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا The woman, if a woman fears cruelty, or she fears from her husband desertion. He's improper. He's acting in an immoral way, ill conduct. She's scared that he will abandon her and her children. There's two options open for the woman. There's two, two ways to cure the problem. The first one is, she gives up her rights. in order for the marriage to remain. So she says to him, you just want to leave me, us and the children, ha? Huh? And I don't have no one to provide for us, ha? Huh? Okay, don't divorce me. Go and get married if you want to, but provide for me. And you can get married, you don't have to come to me, you don't have to come to the children if you want to, but just give us money. Monetary finance. And the evidence for that is the story of Sauda bint Zam'a. Sauda, when she aged, she became very, very old. She, for her own self, felt that the Prophet might not want her. She was scared because after Khadija, the first woman he married was who? Soda. After Khadija, the first woman he married was Soda. And Soda was very old. So she was scared that she might lose the Prophet. He might divorce her. She was scared. And and that he might walk away from her. And that he might not be from his wives the day of judgment. She wanted that. So she said to the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, don't let me go and give my night to Aisha. Stay, I'm your wife, I just want to have that title of being Umm al Mu'minina, the mother of the believers. And I also want to be considered your wife and I want to be the, your wife the day of judgment. I give my wife to who? Aisha. So with Lidalika Aisha used to have how many days? Two days. The second option that the wife has is, if he doesn't, is... This point that we're going to go into, which is, it became very severe. None of that is working. He said, I, even she said, I'm going to give up my nights. I'm going to give up some of, she, whatever. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be, you can get married. It, I'm just giving an example. She just gives up one of her rights. She said, I give up this right. Are we all together? Whatever right she gave, she still sees from this man. He is improper, ill conduct, evil. There's still a problem. It brings us to the last point that we want to finish with. Is what should be done if the discord between the spouses grows stronger. None of that is working. None of that is what? Is working. What she should do is, is Allah, as Allah said, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبَعْثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيمًا خَبِيرًا Allah says, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ إِذْ تَيْفِيَا شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا A very strong marital discord. It's, it's very strong, it's very deep. Allah says, فَبْعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِي وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا A judge from her family and a judge from his family. Meaning her father and two, let the two fathers meet. <laughs> or two representative from the two sides of the family. Because this matter, it couldn't be resolved by the two of them. Now it goes to the family. Now it goes to a higher authority. If both of them want fairness, it will come from this, inshaAllah. If they both are looking for, again, wallahi, this is very important. 
إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا Underline that point. If both of them are looking for what? Rectification. If both of them are looking for what? Making peace. If both of them are looking for reconciliation. Allah made a promise here. What did He say? يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا Allah will bring in from this good. And guess what Allah said right after that? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ Allah عَلِيمًا khabira." Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is ever well acquainted and He knows everything in great details. He knows what you're really thinking. Are you just doing this to... Are you, sh- are you a showman? Where you're just trying to show the people that you've made the two families meet and... But really in your heart, you never want to re- reconciliate. You never really want to be with this woman. Is that the real case? Because if that's the case, then it will never work. Because you'll always look for something. If both parties want to make things work, that is what will happen. Allah will bring reconciliation, inshallah ta'ala. So both parties, one of the signs that both parties are really, they really want good, is that whatever the judgment is, whatever the judgment is, both of them will accept it. And they won't look for qila and qala. Both of them will what? Both of them accepted. The woman, whatever she's been told, she will listen. And whatever the man has been told, he will listen. But if he goes to the wife, when they go home, I think your father was so unjust. And I don't, I don't think my dad understands what's really happening. So I think the, the, that, that judgment wasn't fair. If he's going to say that, that shows that. Did you really want... Because these people are the people who came to the conclusion. You take what they bring to the table. Inshallah ta'ala, I've finished and I've concluded the fiqh of family. Anything wrong or incorrect I might have said is for me a shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa